this is Kent Mormon, the chair of the TAC, and I would like to invite everyone to uh, mute their uh, uh, microphones and uh, raise their hands when they want to speak. Um, I'm going to start with Jacob giving us a role of who's online. Um, and this work session is really for the discussion of the 2050 Metro Vision Regional Transportation Plan. So, Jacob, I'll let you call roll or okay, go thanks. online in case there's okay. someone that isn't, chat with them and let him know. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, as you just said, this is an informal work session. We are not formally taking attendance, but just so we all know who's with us today, I'm going to go through the names that I see. Uh, Aaron Busto, uh, Andrea LaRue, Ben Pierce, Bill Saroy, Brad Calvert, Brody Ayers, uh, Brian Weimer, Carol Buchanan, uh, let's see here, Carson Priest, Chris Hudson, David Gaspers, David Krutzinger, Evan Pinkham, Hank Broxma, Jeff Dankenbring, Jim Katzer, John Cotton, Justin Bagley, Kenneth Johnstone, Lisa Wynn, Matt Callison, Phil Greenwald, Rick Pilgrim, Robert Spots, Brian Billings, Sangu Lee, Sarah Grant, Stephen Strominger, uh, Steve Cook, Steve Durian, Tom Reif, Alvin Badal Sanchez, myself, our chair, Kent Mormon, Melinda Stevens, and Ron Papsdorf. That's who I've got, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. So oh, with and that... also George Holokov also joined, and okay. Frederick Rollenhagen joined. Okay, great. Uh, with that, I'll uh, turn it over to you, Jacob, to make a presentation, and then we'll uh, go into discussion from there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate everyone being with us today. Um, again, this is an informal work session. We haven't done this for a while, but uh, we had a very robust discussion at the May TAC meeting uh, regarding some next steps proposals for the 2050 MetroVision Regional Transportation Plan. So very good, very good conversation, uh, good input. We really appreciate it, genuinely appreciated it. As Dr. Cog's staff, we promised at the May TAC meeting that we would um, have this work session uh, to kind of go through these issues in a little bit more detail, kind of roll up our sleeves a little bit, talk through some things. Uh, we have this work session today. Uh, we have one reserved for next Monday the 15th as needed. Uh, so we'll see where we get today and then leading up to our regular meeting on June 22nd. Um, so with that, we put together a few slides just to kind of help us uh, work through the material that is in the agenda. So let me bring up the slide deck. Um, so, again, we presented a lot of concepts at the May TAC meeting. It was a lot of information. I think maybe it was a little bit too much information. There was just a lot to work through. Um, we really took your input to heart, and we, again, we appreciate it. So, we've tried to do a couple of things at the May TAC meeting. One is to refine our proposals a little bit based on the input received. Uh, so, we'll talk about that as we go through today. Um, the other was also just to um, kind of clarify uh, some of the concepts that we're talking about in terms of how we're actually describing them. Uh, for example, I think that we unintentionally used some language that was really sort of tip focused. We talked about um, project type categories and eligibility, a number of projects, and you know we made it sound a little more tippish, so to speak, than I think was intended. So we wanted to kind of back out of that a little bit um, and talk at a little bit higher, more strategic level about kind of what we're proposing and how this all fits together. We talked about at the May TAC meeting the idea of a framework, uh, so we're going to talk about that as well. So uh, we've come up with something, and this was diagrammed in the um, agenda memo attachment. Uh, we've come up with something that we're loosely calling the policy framework and desired outcomes. Um, big phrase, but basically what that means is, you know, we've done the scenario work. We're talking about now how we put the plan together. We wanted to kind of back out a little bit, as I said, and think of this at a higher level. You know, what are the building blocks that we are proposing to use to put the 2050 MBRTP together? So I think this slide does a really good job of illustrating what we were getting at last time. You know, we called it project type categories. I think that's overly specific and overly technical. The real point is, what are the foundational things? What are the framework things that are informing um, how we're gonna step forward in the plan, how we're gonna start making some decisions and putting the plan together? So what this slide is illustrating um, are the various plans um, and studies 
um, and efforts that ourselves and our planning partners have been engaged on um, over the past you know, few months, year or so, um, of the major things that we've been putting together. And we talked about this last month, for example, for Dr. Cog, you know, we're adopting a regional vision zero plan. Uh, we've now adopted a reg- uh, multimodal freight plan. You know, we've talked about mobility choice, active transportation plan, you know, all of those things. Um, RTD, you know, fast tracks, the regional BRT study, uh, some of the other plans and priorities that RTD has been working on. And of course, they're in the middle of reimagine RTD. Same thing with CDOT, um, their statewide transportation plan, their 10 year pipeline of projects, uh, their strategic transportation safety plan, HPTE's express lane master plan. You know, can, you can see all these on the slide. Um, the point is that there's a lot of, there's a lot of great planning work that's been done by us and done by our partners. And to us, that really identifies what the vision is in this region and what the needs are in this region. Each of these plans talks about, um, you know, what's, what's desired, what's, you know, what's currently there. Um, how do we move from point A to point B? So we think, we think that, you know, us and the others, we've done the work. We've got this information. This is really the planning framework, what we're calling the policy framework and desired outcomes um, that we want to use uh, for moving forward with how we start identifying investment priorities and putting the 2050 plan together. So before I even go on to the next slide, we pause there and take some initial questions or comments. And again, as a reminder, if you want to raise your hand, then we will uh, we will call on you. Uh, is there anyone that would uh, like to uh, to ask some questions or comments on this portion? Uh, let's see. I do see a raised hand from Brian Weimer. Okay. So, Brian, I'm going to try to unmute you. Give okay, I'm. Un- so, Hi, one of my questions is. Um, oh, there you are, Brian. Where does the local government planning efforts fit into this? Um, you know, many of the jurisdictions, cities and counties have transport, but it doesn't seem like they're integrated into this at all. So where does that fit? Yeah, Brian, that's a great question. We're going to get to that in one or two slides, but the short answer is that if you recall at the May TAC meeting, we talked about the role of the, of the county sub-regional forums, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. Um, that's where some of that work comes into play. Would that be on this slide someplace if we're talking about vision needs policy framework? Yes, as I said, we're going to get to that, and it's either the next slide or the slide after, I think. Yeah. I think Brian's saying that perhaps there needs to be a uh, circle with local government input on the vision and needs. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, right now it's just C.RTD, Dr. Cog, and I think that goes in at the local. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, here, that I think the reason that we're starting out this way is not not to exclude local government work by any means whatsoever. And again, as we step through today, you'll see how that comes into play. It's thinking about you know the regional agencies doing the regional work. Where you know where, what does that look like in terms of a start for a regional uh, policy framework and desired outcomes? But I understand your comment and appreciate it. Are uh, there, Mr. Chair, I see that ahead. Art has his hand raised. Go ahead, Art. Were you able to unmute him? There you go. Jacob? Somebody unmuted me. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah, go ahead, Art. Yeah, I think Brian's point's really good, and I think that we're all members of Dr. Cog, so... I really feel strongly that we need a bullet in this Dr. Cog group. You know, some of our plans integrate into CDOT, but then we call those CDOT plans. But I think, you know, if you think of MetroVision constrained and unconstrained, um, the local projects, they need to be listed here under Dr. Cog. I know you're gonna get to it, but I think it really belongs there. And then we'll differentiate as we move forward, but um, we need to bullet that because that's what Dr. Cog is. It's a group of agencies coming 
together to collaborate on an overall plan. And when we get into how many projects, you know, we can submit, is it 10 or 500? It really depends on, well, maybe we only submit 10 that are, you know, regionally uh, viable, but there would be 40 or 200 other projects that are, you know, part of the local plan. So I'm really feeling strongly in agreement with Brian that we need a bullet here. Um, and I don't know if you could pull the other participants to see if that makes sense. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that, Art. Um, Mr. Chair, my apologies. Before we get much further in this, um, Melinda reminded me uh, we do have public comment um, listed as an agenda item because, of course, all our meetings um, are open to the public. Um, can we divert for just a moment and take any public comment if there is any? Uh, that would be great. Um, so is there, if you have public comment, please raise your hand and we'll unmute you. And Mr. Chair, this is Melinda. Um, I'm going to open up all of the mics and then okay. uh, if we don't have public comment, um, just in case people are on the phones. And if you are on the phones to make a public comment, please use star six to unmute yourself. Uh, and then if we don't have any pu public comment or after public comment has finished, uh, I'll remute everyone, okay? That sounds great. Perfect. Okay, I'm unmuting everyone now. So is there any public comment at this time? Um, this is John Cotton. Um, somehow I can't get in with voice. The studying I'm a participant, but I've got no voice. Okay, we we can hear you. Yeah, she just unmuted me, but before that, when I would hit the unmute, I couldn't unmute. Yeah. She may have, um, she may have you, um, um, I think everybody's muted, um, and then when you raise your hand, then you can um, okay. unmute. All right, thank that you. That is correct. Okay. Any other public comment or questions on how this operates today? Uh, I do see Eileen uh, Yazi. She has her hand raised. Eileen, go ahead. Yeah, sure. Um, I appreciate the comments about the local agency plans being included under Dr. Cog. While um, I see that um, as a possible bullet point, I think the area, though, that um, a little, and maybe we'll, I, I think we'll need to address it. Um, further down in the presentation is when we get to the analysis of how um, a local project would fit in a regional plan. While I think it's necessary to um, understand and document all of the local work that's going on, if that's what our, re our, our RTP wants to do, I also think there is a difference between a regional project and a localized project. Um, and again, this is coming from Denver that has, you know, a lot of approved plans from our that do obviously connect into the greater network of CDOT, of Dr. Cobb and RTD in our region. But I think that there is, there is a differentiator between a local project and a regional project and we'll have to come to agreement when we get there. Okay, thank you, Eileen. Uh, is there anyone else with raised hands on public comment? Uh, there is from John Cotton. John, go ahead. Oh, um, hand went away, so uh, I don't see any other hands. <laughs> okay. Well, at this time, we'll uh, close the public comment and then go back to the presentation by Jacob. Uh, Mr. So, Chair, if you'd give me one moment to just remute everyone. Okay. Okay. All right, Mr. Chair, we're ready. We All, right. All right, thank you. So Jacob, if you'd continue with your presentation and okay. make a note about the bullet so far. Okay, yep, thank you, sir. Um, so let's get a little bit more into that discussion about, um, and I think um, Eileen provided a good sort of segue for this, about investment priorities in the 2050 plan. Um, again, last time, I think unintentionally, some of the language we used, we made it sound very tippish. We were talking about projects and project type categories and eligibility and you know sounds a lot like the tip and 
yes to a subset of that, we will need to get there eventually. But again, let's let's sort of bring us up to a little bit higher level in terms of how we think about this and talk about this. What I want to make clear is that in a long range transportation plan, there's many ways that we can express, you know, what our local priorities are, what our regional priorities are, you know, what we care about in the Dr. Cog region um, in terms of investments. One way we do that is yes, by specific projects. Um, as I, you know, discussed at our May TAC meeting, uh, federal regulations require that we show certain types of projects as individual projects in the plan. You know, those big capacity projects, the roadway capacity, interchange capacity, rapid transit type projects, we actually have federal requirement to show those projects in the plan. Um, so that's one way we can do that. Um, and what we talked about in May is that we want to kind of go beyond those minimum federal requirements and, you know, clearly communicate what are the region's investment priorities in the 2050 plan. So we can do that through specific projects. We can do that through project categories where maybe we're not ready to show specific projects just yet. You know, maybe those get developed through the TIP or through another process, but we can at least acknowledge that, you know, this category, this type of project is really important to the region. Another way we can do that, and these work in tandem, sometimes these are more than one, uh, but another way we can do that is through investment allocations in the financial plan. Uh, we talked a little bit about this at the May TAC meeting. I think someone brought up the issue of um, asset management and maintenance. You know, that's a huge issue. That's a priority, I, I think I can say, for the region. We wouldn't necessarily identify individual little sort of maintenance or, or asset management type projects, but we would definitely probably identify that eventually as a category. And we would certainly make clear the priority of that um, in, the, um, in the eventual financial plan uh, for the investment allocations to that type of category. So that's another way we can do it. And yet another way we can do it is through the narrative content in the plan. You know, what are the things that we write about? What are the things that we choose to emphasize um, that someone opens up the 2050 plan when it's complete and says, oh, yeah, I can see in here um, that this topic or this project type or this issue um, is a priority for the Dr. Cog region. So the point here is that there's just there's just a lot of ways that we can express priorities um, for the purposes of what we started at the May 20 or May TAC meeting um, and what we're talking about today. Um, yes, we do want to get to a project conversation. We do want to talk about uh, the projects that we, the candidate projects that we'll solicit um, and evaluate for potential inclusion in what we call the fiscally constrained plan, uh, meaning the subset of our vision and needs that we can fund in the 2050 plan. But as we get into that conversation, really, this is just that reminder that you know this ad, that's not the only way um, that we express priorities in a long-range transportation plan. Um, so again, before I go on to the next slide, any questions on that concept? And I'm looking, Mr. Chair, I don't think I see hand raised, hands raised. Last chance to raise your hand. Okay, Jacob, why don't you go ahead and move forward then if there's no hands raised. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed some animation here. So. Um, but I think I just made that point. Um, actually, let me back up here. Um, this slide you saw last time in May. Um, don't think we need to spend a lot of time here. This is just kind of a reminder that when we do get into that project conversation and we talk about, and again, these are sort of these major projects that we would individually identify in the plan. Um, we had a conversation at the May TEC meeting about um, you know, what projects are eligible, particularly as we think about transitioning from 2040 to 2050. So I'll just go over this again really quickly. Um, on the left side of the slide here, you see the projects that are under construction or in a NEPA process, those will automatically be included. We don't need to reapply for them. We don't need to, you know, they will just be carried over from 2040. Um, projects similarly with NEPA or construction funding um, in our current 2020 to 23 TIP and, you know, similarly in CDOT STIP, those will automatically be included. Those are kind of part and parcel of the long range plan. Those get carried forward into the fiscally constrained 2050 plan. And then what about other types of projects? So projects that are um, in planning or pre NEPA study, so they haven't reached NEPA yet, but maybe there's a PEL, you know, there's some type of study going on um, on a potential project, you know, those sorts of things can compete um, in a solicitation for projects for 2050. Um, other 2040 projects for which maybe you know, something hasn't gotten started just yet, um, but it's it's a project that's been floating out there, um, but there maybe isn't a PEL study started yet, certainly not in NEPA yet, um, that project could compete in solicitation. And then I want to talk about locally funded projects because I think there was a confusion on that last time and it's and someone raised it this morning, you know, what's the, this afternoon, what's the role of locally funded projects in the plan? 
So I want to be really clear on this point. We will need to we will need to get to a further conversation at some point about how we portray locally funded projects in the 2050 plan that we know or we will know by then will be locally funded. So in other words, you know, City of Denver, City of Littleton has a project that they know um, it's just going to be locally funded, but it's on the regional roadway system. We need to show it in the plan. That conversation we'll have later. What I want to make clear as a point of confusion from the May TAC meeting is that if there was a locally funded project in the 2040 RTP that that project sponsor says, you know, I think that's a really good project. I think it would compete well regionally. I want to submit that project for 2015 uh, to have that compete for regional funding. That's the type of project that we're talking about here. So we're not talking about necessarily in this conversation limiting locally funded projects. We need to talk about that more generally later. Uh, the point here is um, a project that was locally funded in 2040 could compete if the project sponsor wanted to compete um, in the solicitation for 2050. Um, so again, before I go on, I want to see if there's uh, questions or conversation on, on any of that. Okay. Is there um, any questions on that? I, I have a couple once everyone's finished uh, raising. I'm hands. looking, Mr. Chair, and I'm I'll look again. I don't think I'm seeing hands raised. All right. So okay. one of I my don't see any hands raised. Okay. So one of, I've got a couple of questions uh, going into the uh, automatically included or can compete. What about projects that um, have their interim projects like I-25 as an example between US 36 and 120th? Um, will that automatically move forward since it was it, it's got a NEPA going on it? to start building part of it or or how will that work? Because yeah, so I'd say there's still out. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Chair, go ahead. No, that's it. Okay. Yeah, so I think the answer is yes, but there's kind of a two part test here. One is that is it a project that um, is it a project that first of all would even have to be included? Now again, we're talking about going, you know, potentially beyond federal requirements, but let's stick with those federal requirements. So, you know, is this a project that uh, through our air quality conformity criteria, we would need to identify as a project in the plan to meet federal requirements. If it is, then we'd have to include it in some way. And if it's a project that's in NEPA, um, then yes, that, that is one that would be included. Okay. And then um, the um, other question is, is, as I read some of your bullets in your uh, constrained projects are the let's say these are stage projects where we have design and and then is this really looking at what will be fully built or or built ha at capacity in these projects um can you give me an example mr chair i think the answer to your question uh, is that in the current tip, we have some projects that are in the design process, and the question mm -hmm. comes, then um, do we go ahead and include those in the in the future uh, 2050 long-range plan? We can debate which year it would happen, but um, or do we um, or or do those go by the wayside, or do they automatically get rolled forward? these projects that are already starting design. You have projects under construction right? or in NEPA. Um, just asking that question. Well, again, it, it depends where it is in that cycle. If it's if it's kind of been through NEPA and now it's in those next phases where, you know, there's preliminary engineering, there's design, there's construction, um, but it's at least been through NEPA, that's one thing. Um, I guess I'd have to know the status of a, of a particular project to kind of think about where is it at sort of in this cycle. Um, but if it's sort of pre NEPA, um, that's one where it would probably be more on the right side of the slide of, you know, can compete um, to be included. Okay. All right. Now, the other, sorry, the other part of your question I want to make sure I answer, Mr. Chair, is that uh, understand that projects, so we're looking at a 30 year plan, right? And our current plan is a 25 year plan. We all recognize that some of these projects that we identify and projects, let's call them project concepts that we identify, you know, can be kind of fuzzy, particularly for a project that, um, you know, maybe competes, it gets in the plan, maybe it's got a PEL, you know, but it's still a long ways away from, you know, from actual construction, right? So I'll give an example. In the 2040 plan, 
uh, the State Highway 119 BRT. That was kind of a concept at that point. You know, there was some preliminary thinking about, you know, maybe it's bus on shoulder, maybe it's going to operate this way, but it was kind of a concept. It hadn't been through NEPA yet. We recognize that these projects, as they go through their life cycle, you know, they get better defined, they go through project development process, they change over time. You know, that's why we amend the plan as we go. Uh, so we recognize that there's a difference between something that, you know, has construction funding in the tip, it's going to be built in three years versus something that may be a priority, but it's more of a concept that, you know, may take 10 or 15 years or longer uh, to sort of flush its, you know, to flush itself out. Okay. Are there any other hands raised? Uh, let me look again, Mr. Chair. I don't think I see any. Okay, then let's proceed on. Okay. All right, so um, investment priorities framework, let's talk about this a little bit. Um, this was also diagrammed out in the uh, attachment to the memo. Um, so we, you know, we took the feedback that we got at the May TAC meeting. Uh, so a couple things that we're suggesting here. Um, one is that, you know, we heard, um, you know, we heard kind of, kind of some concerns from CDOT. We've been talking with CDOT. Uh, we also heard all of you about what's the role of the, of the forums and how that would work. So let me kind of step through this a little bit, um, and then we can talk through some detail uh, about this. So first of all, again, that policy framework and desired outcomes that we talked about a couple slides ago, you know, sort of that foundational piece of, you know, what is, you know, what, what is the vision, what are the needs, you know, what are the things that are inputs into the planning process. So then we have in the upper left in the orange boxes, uh, we have the sub-regional priorities and the interagency priorities. So one of the things that we're proposing here is kind of a two-track process where they work together, but they'll work a little bit in parallel. Um, starting with the interagency process, and this, this is discussed in the memo, where we would want to sit down in some work sessions with RGD and CDOT specifically and focus on, you know, kind of where they're at and what their priorities and what their projects are. Um, again, like us, they are big regional agencies. Uh, we feel it's appropriate not to exclude anyone else, but to sit down with them in kind of that work session format um, and kind of work through with them, you know, some of these regional big picture questions. Um, so that's one path of it. And then the sub-regional uh, process is, is what we started talking about, sub-regional priorities, is what we started talking about at the um, May TAC meeting um, of using the uh, TIP forums, uh, the county TIP forums, um, and talking about priorities sort of at the county level and using the uh, TIP forums as the process to solicit um, some of those, you know, some of those uh, priorities. And I have a slide on that. I think that's the very next slide. So we'll come back to that in a second, but let me keep this sort of high level about how this would work. So we take both of those process kind of, you know, dual track working together, feeding into an evaluation process. And then we start working our way down the blue slides in the middle um, where, you know, we're coordinating these activities with both our partner agencies, uh, with the TIP forums, um, <clears throat> you know, getting a sense of what are the, uh, the regional and sort of the TIP forum investment priorities. Um, we talk in the memo and I'll get to this about um, an evaluation panel that includes, you know, all sort of stakeholders involved um, and trying to, you know, trying to identify those draft investment priorities. At the same time, we're working on the financial plan, bringing together those revenues and expenditures. And then that all comes together um, to help, you know, identify and, and, um, and refine those draft investment priorities. And then getting into a process of working with all of you and with RTC and the board in some work sessions um, to kind of firm that up. So that's kind of that process at a really high level. Ron, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think you captured it. Okay. So before we get into any sort of details about the TIP forums and number of projects and so on, we'll get to that in the next slide. But just again, staying at this high level, are there any sort of initial questions on this concept? It's pretty similar to, fairly similar to what we talked about at the May TAC meeting, but you know, hearing some of the input from CDOT in particular, um, it's that recognition that, you know, maybe we need to work with our regional partners one way and work with our local government partners in a, a, a parallel way uh, to step through this. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, Art has his hand raised. Okay. Um, the final box at the bottom, final investment priorities. Do we really... Because Jacob, I must have heard you say tip, not only tip form, but other uses of tip. 
you know, about 10 times there in just two minutes. Is this final investment tip priorities? Because if it is, let's just be clear, that's what it is. No, Art, it's not. And again, I'm sorry for the confusion. So I think I'm, again, guilty of what, what we did at the May TAC meeting of confusing the TIP and the RTP. Um, uh, only using TIP, and I try not to use the word again in this context, but only referring to the forums. It's called the county transportation forums. Um, but no, the point here in getting to final investment priorities, these are plan level investment priorities. Yes, yeah, some of that will eventually feed into the next TIP and future TIPs, but this is not about the TIP. This is about um, these long range 2015 RTP plan investment priorities. Art, did that answer your question? Yeah, I got to unmute myself and uh, mute myself again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, let's you see, have, Mr. Uh, Chair. Yeah, Lisa Wynn has her hand raised. Okay. Hi, this is Lisa Wynn from Denver International Airport. And I just wanted to kind of ask, um, so, you know, the airport does fit into um, city county at Denver, but definitely functions more as a regional organization as well, um, but doesn't necessarily fit into a county. Um, I don't think we necessarily are to the level of uh, projects as CDOT per se, but um, kind of curious, I guess, where we fit into the puzzle. Yeah, that's a good question, Lisa. Um, so including um, DEN, um, including the toll highway authorities, there's some, you know, TMAs, there's lots of other stakeholders in the process that I don't want to give short shrift to in terms of our kind of ongoing coordination with them and how their input um, helps shape the planning process. So that's all a part of it. I think specifically in the brass tacks of what we're talking about here, um, you do have access to sort of the forum level through Denver, uh, through City of Denver. So that's one way. Uh, the other way is that um, keep in mind that, and we do coordinate closely with with Den and with the other airports, we actually have um, a big section in the long range plan that talks about aviation and talks about what's going on with the airports. We don't typically identify airport specific and if I get my terms correct, airside um, types of improvements. So in other words, we're not going to list in the long range plan things like runway extension, you know, runway rehab, those sorts of things. Where we do have close coordination, and this is demonstrated in our 2040 plan, is things like Pena Boulevard, um, approach to the airport, access to the airport. Um, you know, there's some roadway network things, federal roadway network things that we coordinate on. Uh, so those things definitely come into play um, in terms of putting the plan together. Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. No, and that makes a lot of sense. Um, the, uh, you, you used the term correctly, airside is um, you know, all of our runways, but uh, it's landside is a lot of our um, ground transportation. So Pena Boulevard's one big piece of that, um, any of our other connectors. So yeah, I think that helps. Great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, let me look, Mr. Chair, to see if there's any other hands raised. Uh, there are a couple, uh, Matt Callison. Go ahead, Mac. Yes. Okay, very good. Um, Jacob, I wanted to clarify regarding the um, final investment priorities. That, as I understand it and as presented, really represents a blend of uh, some specific projects, some programs, and, and yet another cadre of categories of program and project categories that have really yet to be fully defined. Yeah, I think that's fair, Mac. In fact, let me get to the presentation here. When we say final investment priorities, it's all of these things back on this slide. So yeah, part of it is specific projects that we show in the plan, but it's everything else that we talked about here um, that goes into uh, developing a, a long range transportation plan. It's the projects, the programs, the services, the, the financial allocations, the narrative, you know, it's everything that um, that communicates um, that communicates investment priorities in our multimodal transportation system over time. Mm -hmm. uh, because in, in the past, uh, as, as recently as with the forms, we use those up to 80% for the uh, total dollars. Hey, Mac, you're cutting in and out a little bit, but I think I understand the nature of your question. If you're there. 
ahead, yes, Jay. I am. Okay, Max, I think you're asking about the 80-20 allocation to the forms and how that comes into play. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's a good question. Let me address that. Um, this is where, again, I can distinctly say there's a clear differential between the TIP and the RTP. That was a TIP thing, and it related to um, the funding split between regional projects and local projects. So that was a financial allocation, um, you know, in terms of how um, um, how the uh, how revenue was distributed to fund projects. Not what we're talking about here for the RTP. The point of the of the counties of uh, the county transportation forms is, and we'll get to this, I think, on the next slide. Is as we started talking about in May, we think that's a good approach to people working together to identify investment priorities at at the county level, um, and, and that's you know those forms those forms do a really good job of bringing people together to work together. But the specific 80-20, that was a very specific tip thing about funding projects. That is not what we're talking about here for the RTP. Does that help clarify? Uh, yes, yes, we recognize that. I, I just, you know, uh, you know, again, going back to the tip, we, we don't want to uh, completely orphan that from the process because the tip, after all, is, is the mechanism for implementing the RTP. It, yeah, Mac. This is this is Ron. I did want to chime in a little bit because I, I think you're you're both correct, um, and Jacob stated that absolutely correctly. The the tip, the tip is one way that the RTP gets implemented. But remember that you know there are multiple components to the tip. There are the sort of traditionally Dr. Cog directed funds uh, that we work with all the partners on. But you know a lot of the projects that get implemented through the tip. Um, are, are selected and programmed directly by our partners at RTD and CDOT. And this, this does not change that at all. This is a long range view of uh, what, what we as a region agree um, are our priorities to uh, get us as close as we can to achieving um, all of our mutual transportation objectives um, for the region. And I, you know, I think one of the things that I thought I picked up from your early comment, Mac, was that you know the vast majority of the investments in the transportation system um, really are just to maintain and operate the system that we have. Um, and the plan accounts for that through the work that we do with RTD and CDOT in terms of program distribution and how much money goes to asset, asset uh, management and maintenance and operations functions. Really, the it's the minority of of um, funds that we um, expect to have available over the 30-year plan horizon that actually go to making substantial capital um, improvements to the transportation system. Oh, it, it absolutely appreciate appreciate bringing that uh, to the surface, Ron. And 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 local jurisdictions have a, a tremendously uh, large share in on that O and M aspect as well so. yeah it's a good point mac and the other way that we account for it in the financial plan is both not just the expenditures but the revenue as well and um you know if you go back and look at the 2040 financial plan we do a pretty detailed breakdown of you know sort of the color of dollars where these revenues are coming from as well as the expenditures and the largest slices of those both those pies are actually local funds and so we are cognizant of that we do include that absolutely in the long-range plan yeah absolutely thank you Thank you. Mr. Chair, um, Eileen Yazzie has had her hand up. Okay, go ahead. Eileen, you should be able to unmute yourself. Uh, now, yes, now I'm unmuted. Um, a question actually where your um, pointer is hovering over the orange boxes. With the regional priorities and the interagency priorities. Um, can you kind of give us an overview of how you guys, how um, how we are all or should be thinking about working, say, with CDOT and RTD to align um, kind of the interagency priorities and sub-regional priorities, for example, with I-25 and um, the PEL and the studies that are happening. This is just an example in the Denver area, obviously there's some interagency coordination with moving those priorities forward. Um, can you, and even with RTD, um, on the flip side of some of our BRT corridors, how, how, does that, how does that look like, feel like to you guys? 
to Dr. Cog? Is it coming out of a subregional? Is it coming out of its own little area as, as kind of these joint projects? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, let me let me start an answer and maybe ask Ron to help me with that. Um, okay. Again, the, the sausage making is a little bit messy, right? So let's just acknowledge that it's messy. How do we bring all this stuff together? Um, again, we want to start with work sessions. I mean, that's what we're currently proposing is to start with some work sessions with um, RTD and CDOT because we took CDOT's input to heart um, at the May TAC meeting. And I think one of the things we heard from CDOT was, you know, they've done a lot of they've done a lot of planning work. They've, you know, they've got a lot of material. Uh, so we want to honor that and kind of just sit down with them, sit down with RTD and kind of work through that. Um, as I said, at the same time, we also propose working with the county transportation forums, having the forums identify, you know, the sort of more local priorities, and then bringing those two processes together. Again, they're working in parallel, really working in tandem. And I think we've got a slide on this in a second. But when we talk about sort of evaluation of projects, when we talk about getting to the final investment priorities, we're really melding both of those together. Um, you know, for example, and again, this is on a slide coming up, but in the valuation of um, those projects, you know, we're proposing a panel that includes all of those stakeholders together. Um, we're proposing, you know, through those work sessions, um, a way that we can show all the work together. What are we hearing from the regional agencies like CDOT and RTD? What are we hearing from the transportation forums? Where are we with the financial plan? What is that telling us about um, some of these issues of, of um, investment priorities and expenditures and allocations? and then bringing that, all that together uh, to create the final investment priorities. Ron, do you want to add to that? I don't think I have anything to add there, Jacob, except for we probably need to move on to the next slides because I think that gets to some of Eileen's questions about sort of how the process works. And I would just reiterate that this is an iterative process. Um, all of these pieces work together, Eileen. Um, and I think the, the whole point is we want to ground ourselves back in sort of that broader policy framework that really takes into account all of the collective sort of planning work we've done to identify the vision and needs. There will be no shortage of um, needs for sort of investments over the next 30 years of the plan period. The question is, how do we work together to come up with sort of in today's world, sort of what we think is the best set of those priorities? Uh, particularly in the first, you know, 10, 15 years of the plan period, knowing that, you know, we have an opportunity to do that. We do this every four years, and there's all there's an opportunity to keep keep revisiting and re and refining. Thank you. Okay. I don't think I see any new hands raised, so let's let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, so this gets at the subregional forum priorities a little bit. Um, so let's talk about this. Um, and I think this will answer some earlier questions about, you know, kind of the role of local governments and how are we reflecting those priorities. Um, again, we recognize that you all are doing your own plans, but you're also part of, as I think one of you said, you're also part of the larger uh, regional plans that we've been talking about as well. So we want to, as we talked about at the May TAC meeting, um, use the county transportation forms as the mechanism to really hear from each of the counties about what are your investment priorities. And again, if you think of the earlier slide of, you know, the four to five different ways that we express investment priorities. We do want to hear all of those things. Um, yes, we do need to talk about projects that we would individually identify in the plan. Uh, so that's part of it as well. Um, you see on the slide here, uh, the number of projects varies by tip share. And I'll sh actually show you that on the very next slide. Uh, we thought some more about that based on the input we received at the uh, May TAC meeting. And then this last bullet here, this focus initially on non-interstate projects at the, at the forum level except for new interchange proposals. Again, that's where that iterative process that Ron and I are talking about comes into play. CDOT has obviously done a lot of work on, on the CDOT system, on the interstates, on the state highways, et cetera. Um, so we wanna see where CDOT's at and then hear from the forums where you're at and then through that iterative process, bring you know, those things together. Questions on that before we go to the next slide about projects. You look, Mr. Chair, for hands raised. I don't think I see any new hands raised. I see a couple hands that I think were raised from before. Um, Eileen, Lisa, Mac. Um, but if you have new questions, um, please feel free to go ahead. Okay. 
Not hearing anything, so I'll go on to the next slide, Mr. Chair. That'd be great. Okay. So um, this is also one of the things, as I said, we talked about at the May TAC meeting. Again, I want to couch this conversation with the reminder that investment priorities are expressed in many different ways in the long-range plan. This is a subset of that. This is a subset that talks about individual projects that we would identify. Again, it's not speaking specifically to narrative, to project categories, financial plan, all the other ways that we express priorities. But yes, we do want to have a process we are, where we are identifying uh, some major investment priorities sort of at the project level from the forums. So this is a proposed, um, this is a proposed number of projects per forum. Let me talk through this a little bit. Uh, we heard your input at the May TAC meeting. Uh, what we did is we calibrated this, and we're happy to have further discussion on this, but we calibrated this based on each forum's share of the region. Um, so in other words, you know, Denver is about 25% of the region. So how about 25 projects? Uh, Jefferson County is about 16% of the region when you look at that. Um, and here's, you know, one, one area where I will say the tip word. Uh, when we looked at the allocation of um, how we divided up the revenue between the forums for the TIP, uh, the funding, um, when we looked at population, employment, and VMT, um, again, you know, for example, Jefferson County is about 16% of the region. So we said, how about 16 projects? Uh, for the smaller areas like Broomfield, uh, Clear Creek, and Gilpin, you know, we wanted to have kind of that minimum of five um, so that they, you know, they're fairly represented as well. So when you add all that up, that's about 115 projects that, that we're talking about. So thoughts on this. Again, let me look, Mr. Chair, to see if there are hands raised. Um, I think Brian has his hand raised. Okay. Let's go ahead and have Brian. Okay, so these are projects that, based on these numbers, that Dr. Cog would have to evaluate. Um, I think one thing to remember is that the forums are going to have to evaluate potentially significantly more than these number of projects that they're allowed to submit, similar to the TIP regional submittals that we did, to come up with the short list that we're going to have to do. So the forums will have a big investment in terms of determining what those projects are and putting putting them together and you know that really hasn't been talked about so far. it's more about what Dr. Cog's staff's ability is not necessarily where the forum's ability as well. Yeah um, thanks for that Brian that's a good point uh, so let's talk about that a little bit first let me be clear and again let's make this distinction between the TIP and the RTP yes we're borrowing some things from the TIP process that we think worked well and we think are applicable to the RTP, but we are not proposing to replicate the TIP process to put the long range plan together. And I do want to be clear about that because I think that was a point of confusion at the May TAC meeting. So as it pertains to this particular issue, when you all think about the work that you did at the forum level to um, evaluate these projects and submit these projects, we are not envisioning anywhere near that workload um, frankly at our level, but, e but even really at the forum level, which is Brian's question, you know, how much work is this? for the forums to have to shortlist even to this number of projects. We are not envisioning that the forums would be spending a significant amount of time, you know, having to go through a detailed evaluation of, um, you know, let's take in Brian's case, Arapahoe County to get to 19 projects. You know, what if the forum gets 40 projects and they have to work their way down to 19? We're not envisioning something that would be a significant amount of forum time um, to get to that point. We are not envisioning a rigorous uh, sort of screening of, of projects. Um, what we are envisioning is, can the forums work together to come up with this sort of numbered list here of, you know, what are those sort of major uh, project investments that, you know, you want to have evaluated for at the regional level for regional funding, meaning federal or state funding in the 2050 long range plan. I think we also envision that the forums would uh, be able to express their priorities in, in other ways as well. Think back to that earlier slide. So, for example, if the Arapahoe County Forum wanted to make clear to us that, hey, asset management, and I know that you're actually talking about that in that forum, how do you maintain your system at the county level and local level? If you said to us, hey, that's a huge priority for us, that's information that we want too, even though that's not going to make its way into a particular project list, that's something that we want to hear about because that, that becomes part of the final investment priorities of the long-range plan. 
So does that start to answer your question, Brian? I think it does. I think it's just what what does the application look like? What is the you know what are what are we actually having to put together to provide this information? Yeah, and, and we we that really sorry, defines how much time we have or how yeah. much investment we'll have. Yeah, it's a good point, and we actually envision. Um, we don't want to make you guys spend every Monday in June with us, but that's why we scheduled the next Monday, June 15th work session, because we anticipated that um, it'd be good to have some further conversation about what does the evaluation side of this equation look like. So we'll see how far we get today, but I do, I do think that's a fair point and a good topic for further conversation. Um, Mr. Chair, Art may have his hand up. Okay. Art? Yeah, so um, I was reading over some comments from other people in Douglas County and, you know, Castle Rock identified 20 projects themselves. So what are we missing in communicating? What type of project differentiation are we talking about here? You know, it goes back to local versus other, but even Castle Rock statement was we have 20, what they call major projects, you know, so the whole of Douglas County gets 10. How, how can we communicate this better to everyone so that we understand what type of projects we're talking about here. We only get 10 yeah. from Douglas County. Yeah, um, so that's a good question. You know, short answer for now is, you know, we're, we're putting those building blocks together, some of which we've already talked about today. You know, they need to be, you know, they truly need to be sort of major projects that we would show individually in the plan. Um, they need to be projects that, you know, would be eligible to compete based on that slide from a few slides ago. I mean, there's some screening and there's some building block work here that um, I think we can step through together to kind of figure out, you know, are we really talking about those kind of projects or are we talking about things that are better expressed in a different way? For example, without having seen a list from Castle Rock or not picking on any jurisdiction, but, you know, intersection projects are important. Operational projects are important. Other types of projects are important that may not rise to the level of what we're talking about here, and there may be a better way to express those in uh, the final 2050 uh, plan document. So I think that's a conversation that we need to have. And just one final comment, thanks for that, but one final comment would be, like you just identified, for example, an important intersection project. You know, this list doesn't preclude them from submitting those types of projects in the regular TIP form uh, project selection process. Yeah, I think that's correct, Art. So again, you know, no one's come up with the eligibility criteria for the next TIP, but you know, based on on past practice, let's take an intersection project. You know, maybe it's a maybe it's a really important intersection. You know, really useful project um, dealing with operations or safety at, at that intersection. There may be a way in the 2050, maybe it's a safety project and there's a way that we sort of flag that or identify that in some way. Um, probably not part of this list here, um, but given our history of, you know, those types of projects of intersection projects, operational type projects, you know, those types of projects are eligible for the TIP, um, even if they're not part of this particular list that we're talking about right now uh, for major project priorities for the plan. Um, so in other words, maybe a better way of saying that is that the TIP has by necessity and, and by default always been more inclusive, shall we say, in terms of the types of things that people apply for in the TIP that aren't necessarily individually represented in, in the plan. I mean, in the TIP, you apply for studies, you apply for intersection projects, operational projects, smaller scale type projects that we wouldn't necessarily individually identify in the plan. Does that answer your question, Art? Thanks. It takes me that long to get to the unmute button. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, Mr. Chair, I think Eileen has her hand raised. Okay. Eileen. Hi. Yeah, I have a quick question. Um, going back to the comments someone made earlier about programs, and this ties back to the last PAC meeting. One of the comments that I think was done even by the poll was about transit operations. Um, and so that's like a, that's a kind of a systematic, programmatic approach to support um, some of, say, for instance, Denver and other counties' needs about 
the need for investment. How is that something that's still being considered in this solicitation share, or how would something like that be integrated into sub-regional forums and or the, the overall conversation? Yeah, that's a good question, Eileen. The short answer is yes, but let me let me try and expand and clarify that. Um, and it was actually some of your comments at the May TAC meeting that prompted our thinking on this, so I appreciate it. At the May TAC meeting, we sort of led with the notion of project type categories because we thought that that level of sort of specificity and organization would help this conversation, and I think it ended up confusing people. Um, again, I think upon reflection that um, it sounded too tippish, it, it sounded too complicated, what are all these different categories? What does it mean? How do I apply? How many projects do I get? You know, et cetera, et cetera. I, I think it made it overly confusing. So what we're trying to do is step back a little bit here um, and say, look, you know, there are things that are really important to us. There's things that are really important to the region. That goes back to the framework that we showed earlier. So safety is an example. Safety is really important to everyone in this region. I can say with confidence that is going to be an extremely high priority in the 2050 plan. Rather than get into a conversation as we try to do at the May TAC meeting, okay, what does a safety project mean? How do we identify that? How does that look like? How do you apply for it? How many projects do you get? How do we reflect that in the final plan? I think that's a level of detail that was, that was confusing to people. The point we were trying to make is, what is that framework that we're using to, uh, to guide this process, to make decisions, to eventually put the plan together? And safety is one of those foundational things in that framework. So what we're getting at here is that Yes, in this particular list that we're showing on the slide, there may be a safety project that's worthy of, you know, being one of those submittals. Maybe let's take Denver in your 25 submittals. Maybe you've got a safety project that, that would be part of. It's a major enough project that, you know, maybe it's something on federal or whatever where it would sort of meet all the other sort of screenings and tests, and that's the type of project that you'd want to submit for. Maybe it's something that is more that we would show in a different way, um, you know, whether financially, whether in a category, in another way that's maybe more appropriate when we put the final plan together. I think what we're asking people at this meeting is to not get quite so caught up in the final organization, the long range plan. How are you gonna show this particular thing? We're trying to pull us back to a higher level conversation of how do we make decisions of what are the types of things that we even wanna include um, as we go through this process of putting the plan together? Does that help? It does, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, let me look to see if there's any other hands raised. Um, Tom Reif, I think, has his hand raised. Okay, Tom. Jacob, did you unmute him? Um, he's showing his unmuted. Okay. Um, you, sh you should be able to speak. And Tom, if you're not able to speak for some reason, you're also welcome to um, um, type your question in and we can answer it that way. So Mr. Chair, while Tom is kind of figuring that out, um, Eileen, it looks like you had a question in the chat box. Um, can you repeat the process of how the numbers were derived? And I assume you were talking about the number of proposed projects by forum on this slide. So again, just to, uh, just to talk about that again a little bit, it's basically based on, um, it's based on each, each county's or you know, each forum share of the region. So again, like Denver, Denver County, Denver is about 25% of the region. Um, so we thought it made sense, you know, 25 projects. Um, you know, Boulder County is about 10% of the region, uh, so 10 projects. Um, again, we did do a minimum for the smaller um, Broomfield, Clear Creek, and Gilpin of five, and Southwest Wells of five. Um, so that they have kind of the minimum number of, uh, of projects. So along that line, were you using your current population figures then to come up with that, or population plus employment, et cetera? This is the one part that's basically the same as we did um, for the TIP process that we just that we just completed. Okay. So it's that Which same idea of population. Right? Those targets were based on a population, employment, and VMT. Okay. Which, for those of you that weren't involved in the development of the TIP process, we ran a whole bunch of different formulas, and they all came up within one or two percent of each other. 
Yeah, so we're basically proposing to use those same ratios. Okay, and so I guess the question is, are you going to use current population to refigure them, or are you use them from what the tip developed a couple of years back? At the moment, we're proposing essentially what was used in the tip. I don't know if, how much current population would change this very much, but yeah, Mr. Chair, I think I think we didn't expect that there would be significant enough change to really have a a major impact on on this. Okay, and it is current, not future populations. So correct. Okay. This current population, David Kutzinger uh, typed in the chat box. I think that was his question. Is it based on 2020 or 2045 number um, or 2050 numbers? Uh, this is based on current population. Okay. All right. So, so uh, did Tom get a chance to ask his question? I don't see anything. In, uh, no, actually, I do. Tom says, Kent is correct. We should be using 2020 census data. Well, we don't have 2020 census data yet. We can't we can't use that. Okay. All right. Any other hands raised, Jacob? Uh, let me look, Mr. Chair. I don't I don't see any. Okay. So I, I and you'll probably get to it later in the your presentation, Jacob, but I think um, Art and Brian have both brought up, you know, what's a local project versus a regional project, and that's something that we need to make sure we understand, because I take it that the regional projects are the ones that are going to be submitted. The local projects would just be added into the, into the process, into the, into the RTP. In general terms, I think that's correct, Mr. Chair. And so it's it's unfortunate the word regional means a lot of different things, um, and it's an easily sort of confusing term. Uh, we talk about regional funding, we talk about regional projects, we talk about air quality uh, conforming regional you know projects from a sort of definition perspective. Um, so admittedly, it can get really confusing. I apologize for that. In this context, typically when we're talking about regional versus local projects, we're typically talking about how they're funded. Um, and again, I want to make the point it's not. It's not in this process we're saying that locally funded projects are eligible, but you can only get the number of locally, project, locally funded projects that you submit uh, through the forums. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying, again, is that if you had a locally funded project in 2040 that you think is a really good project, you would compete um, in your forum. You know, together you think that this is you know, a project that you want to submit uh, for, re you know, for regional funding, you know, regional evaluation. Um, that's what we're suggesting uh, that that means. Uh, for a project that we know is going to be locally funded or a project that, you know, you have the 2040 plan that you want to keep in 2015, admittedly more conversation on that, but that's that's a separate process. That's not what we're talking about here. Okay. Just wanted to be it's really about that. that competition for regional dollars. Okay. Well, if there's no more hands raised, we should move on, Jacob. Um, let's see. Tom has another in the chat box. Uh, by the time the plan is adopted and we use the data, this data, the census report should be available. Um, so let me address that. And, and again, I, Tom, I think I get your larger point of, of you know, you want to make sure that this is fair um, so we can have that conversation about is, is what we used uh, for the just completed tip sort of quote unquote good enough, fair enough, um, or do we want to try and update any of that? But in terms of the census, I don't think the final census data is coming out till like mid-21 or later. Uh, the plan will be well adopted by then. We're suggesting to use, um, as Ron said, the population employment VMT uh, that was used in the TIP process as a means of just, you know, sort of a general allocation of, of projects by forum. You know, that work is going to happen in the next three months. That's something that we need to do now um, so that we can continue building the 2050 plan. Um, by the time we have those projects identified and the plans modeled and all those steps and it's adopted early next year, we won't have the census data yet. Um, so I don't think we see census data. Sorry, Jacob, to interrupt. I just I want to I want I want to clear up. Uh, I want to make sure there's no confusion on this point. This is not a tip process. This is not a this is not this is this is a process to help define a universe of possible investment priorities over the 30 years of the 2050 RTP. Um, this is these numbers are not a guarantee that Douglas County gets 
10 projects, 10 sort of regionally significant projects into the 2050 RTP from this. This is this is a solicitation through the county-based forums to identify sort of the priorities within those geographies for all of us collectively to consider um, for inclusion as an investment priority in the 30-year regional transportation plan. Um, this is not this is not Adams County give us your best 15 projects to put in the plan and those projects go in the plan. This is I, I want to be really really clear about that. This is not a tip allocation process. Ron, I think that's a good point. And um, we need to make sure that we're very clear as we move this process up and through the sub-regional forms and the board, et cetera, that they understand that. Yeah, thank you, Ron. That is a good point. And just by way of comparison, in the 2040 plan, when you look at the number of individually identified projects in the fiscally constrained plan that in 2040 we sort of showed as sort of Dr. Cog funded projects, I think the number is roughly around 30 maybe 35 or so, um, we can go back and count, but the point is that it is a much smaller number than 115, uh, to Ron's point. Okay. Do you have any more hands raised? Uh, let me look, Mr. Chair. Art has his hand up, but I'm not sure if that's, uh, if that's still current. I thought I'd put it down, but um, Tom and I were talking, and then you got his answer to his question, and I think Ron just really clarified it. Sometimes I think a little more information on the slide, so when you pick up the slide alone, we understand that, oh, look it, we're, we're going to solicit, which it says, um, projects to help create or build the Metro Vision, rather than, you know, just looking at this, and it might say, oh, we're going to get 10 projects. Yeah, th that, yeah, I appreciate that comment, Art, because it, it it is challenging, and you know, it's we we try to put these staff memos together. We try to kind of consolidate things down into um, sort of bite-sized pieces in these slides, and sometimes the larger message does get lost in that. Um, I think you know there, we have identified collectively through a lot of our efforts, sort of the broad vision of what we believe the transportation system in this region. Um, and in the state should look like, um, you know, starting with MetroVision, starting with Dr. Cog's MetroVision plan um, and sort of all of the, the policy framework that, that goes into that, more recent planning efforts through the Vision Zero plan, the regional freight plan, the statewide freight plan, the, the statewide transportation plan um, process, the 10-year um, development uh, program. I mean, all RTDs, efforts the regional brt study work i mean all of these components that we're that we're trying to indicate you know and and show truly are the build the building blocks for what we want to achieve um, all of the system all the improvements we want to make we know for a fact that over the next 30 years we will not have enough resources collectively to deliver on all of the entirety of all of that vision this is a process to help us determine the most important components of that collective vision as we can define it today based on what we know today for the 30-year plan and that's that's the process we're talking about now is how do we how do we sort of make a kind of take that big vision narrow it down to a smaller universe of possible investments and then work through a process together to further narrow that down to what we truly believe we can reasonably achieve with the resources that we'll have available over the 30 years, knowing that then in four years again, we come back and we revisit and, and see where we're at and reassess and, and um, kind of update the plan. So I hope that helps a little bit. Mr. Chair, I don't think I see any further hands raised. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. Please do. Okay, and I think we're close to the end. Um, so this is a little bit more detail. Some of this I think we've we've already talked about, but just to um, just to kind of talk through uh, what's on the slide here. Um, again, Ron just kind of said this, but you know the priorities that we're talking about, the process we're talking about, is the greatest transportation needs from our policy framework and desired outcomes. Everything that Ron just rattled off about what's being done uh, in the region. 
Um, so we talked about the notion of you know, sort of process in parallel, you know, us working with RTD and CDOT and some work sessions. Um, we talked about the forum process. So this is specifically on this slide talking about uh, working with our partner agencies. Again, the notion here, we took CDOT's feedback to heart in particular at the May TAC meeting, you know, knowing all the work that CDOT's done, all the work that RTD's done, we felt it was appropriate uh, to kind of sit down with them in a work session format and kind of talk through where both agencies are at, um, how they align with each other, how they align with us, how they align with um, local priorities um, and focus on, you know, focus on that conversation as well as, as we're in parallel uh, working with the county transportation forums. Any questions on this slide? Let me look and see, Mr. Chair, if this hand's raised. I don't think I see any. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next slide. So evaluation process, and again, you know, with the caveat that, you know, there's more conversation to have here, but at least to, you know, we started at the May TAC meeting and want to amplify that a little bit here and recognize that, that there's more that we can talk about. Um, but one of the things based on the feedback we received at the May TAC meeting is sort of thinking about, you know, what does an evaluation process look like? So we're proposing an evaluation committee made up of uh, Dr. Cog, CDOT, RTD, as well as representatives from each of the uh, county transportation forums uh, to evaluate, you know, these submittals that we get in terms of these major investment project priorities. As we talked about at the May TAC meeting, we are proposing to use um, a qualitative uh, evaluation process. We think that's appropriate um, for a long range transportation plan. Um, there seemed to be general agreement on that from the May TAC meeting based on the Mentimeter results. Um, I think there were some many good sort of arguments made uh, for using a qualitative process. And there were a couple of good arguments made for using a quantitative, um, but we are proposing to use a qualitative process. Um, one of the comments that we got at the May TAC meeting was, you know, the number of objectives from the Metro Vision Plan. Um, there were a lot of objectives that we had listed um, at the May TAC meeting, and we had even screened those a little bit, but I think there was something like 30 or close to 30 that we were listing. And, and upon reflection, that kind of felt like a lot. Um, and we understand that, that that would feel like a lot to someone submitting a project. So we went back to MetroVision. At the May TAC meeting, we were proposing most of or many of um, both the primary objectives and what we call supporting objectives um, in MetroVision. Um, we went back and uh, what's, in your, uh, what's in your memo, what's in your attachment for this work session is a list of most but not all of the, what are known as just the primary objectives in MetroVision. So the idea here is that they still cover all the topics that we think we're collectively interested in, they still talk about, you know, safety, they still talk about, um, you know, congestion and all, you know, all the things that we always talk about. We think they're covered in those primary objectives, but it also gives a little bit more flexibility. And I think it better sort of channels, you know, what's important uh, for both as a project sponsor, you know, from the forum submitting these, uh, these candidate projects and, and for the evaluation side of it, um, of evaluating the um, sort of effectiveness of these projects. Um, and then the third bullet here, you know, uh, don't want to forget this, you know, we're talking about sort of our local and regional process, but we do have some federal requirements um, under the FAST Act in terms of how we put this plan together and some things in the FAST Act that we are directed, um, required to under federal requirements uh, to include in that evaluation as well. Um, and we think most or all of those are covered in, in terms of the process that we're already talking about. So, for example, safety is a big one, and we've already talked about safety um, and some of these other ones. So that is a piece of it as well. So with that, let me pause and take any questions on this, and let me look to see if there's hands raised. Uh, Jacob, could I suggest on these questions, let's take it one bullet at a time so that we're not jumping all over. So let's start with the first bullet about the makeup of the evaluation committee. Okay. Um, so far, I'm not seeing any hands raised, and I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. Okay. Then let's move on to the investment priorities against the Metro Vision objectives. Um, yes, no, and then high, medium, low. Uh, are there any questions on that? Um, again, I'm looking, Mr. Chair. I am not seeing any hands raised so far, and I'm not seeing anything in the chat box. Okay, so just to comment on that for staff's consideration, having said on the previous uh, regional uh, 
where we just had really high, medium, low. You may want to expand that to a little more to be more like have a have a medium high and a medium low so that you have five categories. I think it would differentiate the uh, um, projects a little more. That's that's a yeah, personal. And, and, and I don't know how the rest of the TAC feels about that, but that's just a suggestion up for comment. Yeah, we appreciate that. And I think um, if we do have a, a work session next Monday to, to focus more on evaluation, I think that's an important point um, to include in that conversation. Um, and were you suggesting yes, no, or high, medium, low? Let me ask that question. Um, again, sort of at this, at this rough level, we were suggesting both, Mr. Chair. So some of these might lend themselves to a high, medium, low. Some might be yes, no. I think the point here is not to be overly specific just yet. It's more about, um, you know, examples of that qualitative evaluation based on the MetroVision objectives. Okay. Do you have any other hands up for, for I that? don't. Let me look one last time. I don't think I'm seeing any. Uh, no, wait a minute. Um, Brian Weimer has his hand raised. Okay. Brian, go ahead. Um, so my question is, are all the MetroVision objectives being looked at? Or are you screening some of them out and we're only going to take what are considered priority MetroVision objectives? Uh, good question, Brian. So we did screen out a few. I don't remember exactly how many. I want to say roughly maybe five. Um, if you look in the attachment, we're proposing 10. Um, and even 10 kind of felt about right. Um, particularly thinking back to, again, without confusing this with the TIP, but thinking about the TIP experience of the number of objectives that uh, we used in the TIP process, it was about eight or nine. So 10 felt about right. Um, the reason we screened out the, again, I think it was a handful, maybe five, uh, was because we were looking for those that didn't seem quite as relevant or quite as tangible, either something that's kind of hard to respond to or something that just didn't, you know, they're all important, right, but something that didn't seem quite as quite as applicable to what we're trying to do here. So we wanted to focus on um, on the most applicable and the most sort of answerable of those of those objectives. And where were those listed in the attachments? Yeah, it's attachment three of the memo for this work session. You should see a list of those proposed objectives. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ch yeah, thank you, Brian. Mr. Chair, John Cotton has a thing in the chat box. Um, he says, I would not go more than three choices as that was what we were trying to get away from, as that was what we were trying to get away from minor differences. Yeah, well, my, my point was, my recollection is when we were in the, uh, the TIP, that TIP policy group, that was the whole discussion. We used to, you know, we could have 3.2s and 3.4s and you can't really differentiate between those. Um, so we tried to get it to where it was more, you know, you, they generally seem to fall into kind of a three level categories. So I wouldn't suggest more than at least four. That's a good comment, John. I just know that in the evaluation process, three words pretty tight and hard to figure out sometimes. Yeah, and we appreciate both perspectives. I would suggest we don't have to solve that here today. I think that's a good conversation for next week, like I said, um, or the next conversation we have on this, but we will take that input um, and think through that a little bit more. Okay. Any more hands raised there for this particular? Um, uh, Looking, I think we addressed John. He had his hand raised, but I think that's I think we addressed his comment. And I am not seeing any other hands raised, Mr. Chair. Or in the chat box. Yeah, nothing else in the chat okay. box so far. So then, address performance measure requirements of the FAST Act. Um, are is there any comment on that? If you'd raise your hand or add something in the chat box. Are you seeing any hands raised? Uh, I'm looking, Mr. Chair, and no, I don't. And I don't see anything in the chat box. Okay. My only comment on this is, should we say the FAST Act or latest 
transportation related um, legislation on the federal level. As, I, I think uh, our point here, sorry, Mr. Chair. As a couple of bills are starting to work their way through both the Senate and the House. Yeah, and we've been monitoring those. I think the point here is that by the time those get adopted and implemented, we'll be well past this process. Okay. Um, it takes a very long time from not just to adopt the legislation, but then the rulemaking and the uh, all the implementation that goes with it. So the requirements that are placed upon us for this planning process are those that are already articulated in the FAST Act. Okay, that that clears it up. Thank you. Yeah. All right. um, I think we've got one or two more slides, but we're almost there. Oh, well, we're on our last slide. So, um, so again, today we wanted to use this work session format to talk through uh, some of the issues that we initially raised at the May TAC meeting, uh, talking through in a little bit more detail. I think this has been a really good conversation today. Uh, so we've covered the policy framework and desired outcomes. Uh, we've talked about major investment priority project solicitation process. Um, so question here is, as I've already hinted, uh, we have reserved the time for work session next Monday if we want to have it to have a conversation about um, discussion on major investment priority projects evaluation. Uh, so I think we'd be happy to do that so we can dig into that in a little more detail. And then all of this would lead up to our regular June 22nd TAC meeting where we would bring all these topics back together, um, talk through it one more time, and ask for the committee's consensus to move it forward to RTC and the board in July. So that's kind of where we're at. So um, what's what's the pleasure of the TAC? Do you, we want a June 15th meeting or not? And I'll let you raise your hands and we'll, we'll call on you. Yeah, and to be clear, if we had something on June 15th, it would be a work session like this. Correct. Hey, Mr. Mr. Chair, this is Ron, and sorry to yes. sorry for the interruption. If you'll indulge me a little bit, I just, just want to put a little bit of a fine point on sort of because we land we ended with sort of the discussion of this evaluation process, but I want to make it clear um, and it, to kind of round out the entire discussion that you know that evaluation process is is one important piece of information into ultimately putting together sort of the draft program of project investment priorities, um, but it's not the end of it, right? We're not, this is not a tip process. We're not going to go go down in, in score order and, you know, this, this project's in, this project's out because it scored, you know, a half a point more that this is one piece of information in addition to what we learned through this scenario evaluation work, in addition to that entire sort of policy framework that we have all collectively um, identified and last but not certainly not least the financial plan um, piece all has to come together through that interagency inter coordination process between Dr. Cog, RTD, and CDOT to really take all of those pieces of information and create a draft um, set of investment priorities that then would get reviewed through CHAC, RTC, and the board before we develop the final draft. I just want to make sure that part of the process was, was clear today. Thank you, Ron. So, Mr. Chair, I'm not seeing any hand raised, but there is one comment in the chat box from Eileen. Um, yes, for June 15th. I also think that we can have a regional discussion about CDOT and RTD planning efforts and integration into solicitation. Okay. Other thoughts or comments on what Eileen's suggesting? Uh, Mr. Chair, it looks like Brian Weimer has his hand raised. Okay, Brian. So I would agree with Lane's comments and or the June 15th seems like we need to have that discussion. One, you know, after Ron was talking, one of the concerns or I'm wondering, is the unconstrained plan all the projects that are submitted and you know at some point obviously we have to get to a fiscally constrained plan but isn't that really what we're kind of identifying as our needs list throughout the process so how does that integrate together it it might yeah. be it might be brian or it might be even sort of you know there's the way the 2040 plan was constructed, there's sort of the vision plan um, 
which is not not entirely an unconstrained sort of set of priorities, but um, pretty aggressive. Um, in federal law parlance, you know, you can sort of have an illustrative plan. So you, you adopt a financially constrained or a financially reasonable plan for investments that um, the region intends to make over the plan horizon period with reasonably expected revenues, but then can define sort of an illustrative set of investments that, that might happen if there were additional resources um, available during the plan horizon. Um, so yeah, this might, might, might be that. I think that's, that's a discussion we can have sort of as we get further down this path, but I don't think that's an unreasonable thought to consider. Okay. Brian, did that answer your question? Yeah, I mean, it was more of, you know, how does this integrate into a, obviously we have choices to make with fiscal constraint, but um, I think, you know, I think it's important to talk about what the needs are irrespective of the fiscal constraint. Um, that's part of the narrative, that's part of the education. If we ever um, can get to a point of maybe increasing our resources that we have within the region. That's true. Yeah, good comment, Brian. Uh, Mr. Chair, I am not seeing any other hands raised and I'm not seeing anything else in the chat box. Okay. Then um, I would, from what are the positive, uh, just two speaking, but I see that June 15th might be good to talk a little more on the major investment priority projects evaluation. Yes. And, and okay. Mr. Chair, this is Ron. I just want, I also want to acknowledge, you know, appreciate um, CDOT's comments at the last TAC meeting. I appreciate, you know, we've had some continuing conversations and we intend to kind of continue the discussions with um, CDOT and RTD on sort of the, the sort of interagency part of this process and, and um, work out kind of final, final details around that and make sure that we're, we're all mutually comfortable with sort of the process we come up with. So, just understand that there are there are some of those conversations happening as well, and hope that we'll be in a on a good position to report some positive um, outcome um, at the next work session. Okay. If there's no other hands raised or comment, I thank everyone for their time, and I look forward to speaking with you on uh, the fifteenth. I believe one thirty. Correct, Jacob. Yes, um, I believe we've already sent out a calendar item asking folks to hold uh, next Monday at 1.30, so it'll be very similar to today. Okay. And let me also echo, if I could, Mr. Chair, just, you know, again, thanking everyone for taking extra time today. Um, really good conversation. Really appreciate your input. Um, helps us as, as we continue in this process. Um, so we'll keep on working collaboratively with all of you and, um, you know, stepping towards uh, moving forward with the plan. So we really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. So Jacob, if they do have some additional questions, they email you or Ron or Melinda? Sure. Anyone is, yeah, anyone is welcome to email me. Okay. Yeah. Email Jacob. Okay. Email <laughs> Jacob. Okay. Got that. <laughs> That's because I'll actually see it. <laughs> All right. So with that, I think we're, we'll call it a day and uh, we'll see you next week. Again, thank you, everybody.